Welcome to the 2024 Indiana DMV written test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your DMV instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, what can make it harder for your car to stop? A, worn out brake pads. B, rain slicked roads. C, low tire pressure. D, all of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. Multiple factors can contribute to making it more challenging for a car to stop, including worn out brake pads, rain slicked roads, and low tire pressure. When these conditions coincide, they collectively diminish the efficiency of braking systems, posing a significant risk to the vehicle's ability to stop promptly. Question 2 What does this sign show you might find on the road? A. A deer crossing. B. A picture of a silhouette of a deer. C. An arrow pointing to the direction where deer may be crossing. D. The words, deer crossing. The correct answer is A. A deer crossing. This sign tells you that you should be extra careful because there might be deer crossing the road in this area. It helps keep both drivers and deer safe. Question 3. What does this sign on the road tell you about what's coming up? A. The maximum speed limit. B. The overpass ahead has a low clearance. C. The number of lanes on the road. D. The distance to the nearest gas station. The correct answer is B. The overpass ahead has a low clearance. This sign warns drivers that there's a bridge or overpass up ahead with not much space, so taller vehicles should be careful and make sure they can fit underneath it. Safety is important on the road. Question 4. What color are the lines that separate lanes of traffic going in different directions? A. Red. B. Blue. C. Green. D. Yellow. The correct answer is D. Yellow. When you see yellow lines on the road, it means that the lanes are separating traffic moving in opposite directions. This helps drivers stay in the right lanes and drive safely. Question 5. What does this sign on the road tell you might be coming up? A. A hospital or medical facility. B. A location related to emergency services. C. A recreational area or park. D. Traffic signal ahead. The correct answer is D. Traffic signal ahead. This sign lets you know that there's a traffic signal up ahead and it's a reminder to be prepared to slow down and follow the traffic rules when you see the signal. It helps everyone stay safe on the road. Question 6. What color are the lines that separate lanes of traffic moving in the same direction? A. Red. B. White. C. Green. D. Blue. The correct answer is B. White. When you see white lines on the road, it means the lanes are dividing traffic moving in the same direction. They help drivers stay in their lanes and drive safely. Question 7. How much insurance coverage do drivers need for both personal injury protection, PIP, and property damage liability, PDL? A. $10,000. B. $1,000. C. $5,000. D. $100. The correct answer is... A. $10,000. Drivers should have at least $10,000 in both personal injury protection, PIP, and property damage liability, PDL, insurance coverage. This helps ensure that if there's an accident, there's enough money to cover any injuries or damage. Question 8. What should a driver do when they see a flashing red traffic signal? A. Speed up and go quickly. B turn around and go back. C. Stop before entering the intersection. D. Honk the horn loudly. The correct answer is C. Stop before entering the intersection. When a driver sees a flashing red traffic signal, they should come to a complete stop before entering the intersection. This is important to avoid accidents and make sure the road is safe for everyone. Question 9. What should you do when you park your car on an uphill street with a curb? A. Turn the front wheels toward the curb. B. Keep the wheels straight. 
C. Speed up and honk the horn. D. Turn the front wheels away from the curb. The correct answer is D. Turn the front wheels away from the curb. When you park uphill with a curb, you should turn the front wheels away from the curb. This way, if your car starts rolling, it will go away from the road and not into traffic, making it safer. Question 10. What's the right thing to do when you see an emergency vehicle with flashing red or blue lights coming towards you? A. Speed up and get out of the way quickly. B. Continue driving as usual. C. Pull over to the side of the road and come to a complete stop. D. Drive close to the emergency vehicle. The correct answer is C. Pull over to the side of the road and come to a complete stop. When you see an emergency vehicle with flashing red or blue lights, you should pull over to the side of the road and stop. This helps the emergency vehicle get where it needs to go quickly to help people who might be in trouble. Question 11. When can you go around another car on the road? A. When the car is going too slow. B. When the car is stopped at a red light. C. When the car is turning left. D. None of the above. The correct answer is D. None of the above. You should not pass another car unless it's safe and legal to do so. None of the provided choices is a safe reason to pass a car on the road. Question 12. Under what circumstances are you permitted to utilize high-occupancy vehicle lanes while driving? A. When you have two or more passengers in your vehicle. B. When you are driving a public transportation vehicle. C. When you are driving an electric car. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. High Occupancy Vehicle, HOV, lanes can be legally accessed when specific conditions are met, such as having two or more passengers in the vehicle, operating a public transportation vehicle, or driving an electric car. Adhering to these requirements allows drivers to utilize HOV lanes, promoting carpooling, public transportation usage, and eco-friendly driving practices. Question 13. What should you do when you want to move your car from one lane to another? A. Close your eyes and hope for the best. B. Signal. Check your mirrors. Check your blind spot in the direction you plan to move, then change lanes. C. Drive as fast as you can. D. Blow your horn loudly. The correct answer is B. Signal. Check your mirrors. Check your blind spot in the direction you plan to move, then change lanes. When you want to change lanes, it's important to follow these steps. Signaling, checking your mirrors, and looking in your blind spot helps you do it safely and lets other drivers know your intentions on the road. Question 14. What does this road sign show you about how traffic can move? A. Traffic can move in both directions. B. Traffic can move in the opposite direction. C. Traffic can move in any direction. D. Traffic flows only in the direction of the arrow. The correct answer is D. Traffic flows only in the direction of the arrow. This sign tells you that traffic on this road can only go in the direction that the arrow is pointing. It helps everyone stay safe and organized on the road. Question 15. What kind of space on the road do motorcycles have the right to use? A. The same full lane width as other motor vehicles. B. The sidewalk. C. Only a tiny strip on the side of the road. D. The grassy area next to the road. The correct answer is A. The same full lane width as other motor vehicles. Motorcycles have the right to use the same amount of space on the road as other vehicles. This helps keep riders safe and allows them to travel like everyone else. Question 16. What should you do when you see a steady yellow light at an intersection? A. Speed up and go as fast as you can. B. Turn around and go back. C. Slow down and prepare to stop. D. Honk your horn loudly. The correct answer is C. Slow down and prepare to stop. When a yellow light is steady at an intersection, it's a signal to slow down and get ready to stop your car. This helps make sure you can safely stop before the light turns red. Question 17. 
When should you move to the side of the road and let an emergency vehicle go by? A. Regardless of your direction. B. Only if you see a police car. C. Only if you are in a hurry. D. Only if you're near a hospital. The correct answer is A. Regardless of your direction. It's important to pull over to the side of the road and allow an emergency vehicle to pass no matter which way you're going. This helps them get to where they need to go quickly and safely. Question 18. What are the advisable actions to take when the road surfaces are slick? A. Reduce your speed and drive slower than usual. B. Maintain a safe following distance. C. Apply brakes gently and in a controlled manner. D. All of the above. The correct answer is A. Reduce your speed and drive slower than usual. When the roads are slippery, it's important to increase the space between your car and the one in front. This gives you more time to stop safely and helps prevent accidents. Question 19. What doesn't affect how far your vehicle needs to stop? A. Color of your car. B. How fast you're going. C. Steering ability. D. Size of your car. The correct answer is C. Steering ability. The distance your car needs to stop is mainly influenced by how fast you're driving. The color and size of your car don't matter much. Steering ability is important for controlling your car, but it doesn't affect the stopping distance. Question 20. What do you realize when you're about to turn onto a road with a broken yellow line in the middle? A. You're on a one-way road. B. There's a parade on the road. C. It's time for a race. D. You are on a two-way road. The correct answer is D. You are on a two-way road. When you see a road with a broken yellow line, it means you're on a two-way road, where traffic can come from both directions. It's important to be aware of oncoming vehicles and drive safely. Question 21. What should you do when you see an emergency vehicle with sirens and flashing lights coming towards you? A. Speed up and race the emergency vehicle. B. Keep driving as usual. C. Close your eyes and hope it goes away. D. Pull to the right and stop. The correct answer is D. Pull to the right and stop. When you see an emergency vehicle with sirens and flashing lights, you should quickly and safely move your car to the right side of the road and come to a complete stop. This allows the emergency vehicle to pass safely and reach its destination to help others in need. Question 22. What should you do when you see a school bus stopped with its stop arm out? A. Speed up and drive around the bus. B. Honk your horn loudly. C. Come to a complete stop and wait to proceed. D. Try to pass the bus quickly. The correct answer is C. Come to a complete stop and wait to proceed. When you see a school bus with its stop arm extended, it means you should stop your car completely and wait until the arm goes back in. This helps keep kids safe when they're getting on or off the bus. Question 23. What happens when two cars get to a four-way stop at the same time? A. They should race to see who goes first. B. The driver to arrive first has the right of way. C. The car with the loudest horn goes first. D. They should stop and have a picnic. The correct answer is B. The driver to arrive first has the right of way. When two cars get to a four-way stop at the same time, the car that got there first gets to go first. It's a fair way to decide who moves, and it keeps traffic flowing smoothly. Question 24. What's the correct order of colors for traffic lights, starting from the top? A. Red, yellow, green. B. Yellow, red, green. C. Red, green, yellow. D. Green, yellow, red. The correct answer is A. Red, yellow, green. The proper order for traffic lights from top to bottom is red, yellow, and green. These colors help drivers know when to stop, slow down, and go, keeping the road safe and organized. Question 25. What does this sign tell you about the road ahead? A. You are approaching a dead end. B. A divided highway begins. C. It's a warning of a steep hill. D. The road is closed for construction. The correct answer is B. 
a divided highway begins. This sign lets you know that the road is about to split into two separate lanes, and you'll need to be careful when driving in this area. It helps drivers understand the road layout and stay safe. Question 26. As an oncoming car with bright headlights approaches, where should you direct your gaze on the road? A. Directly into the approaching headlights. B. At the road's center line. C. Toward the right edge of the road. D. Close your eyes briefly to avoid glare. The correct answer is C. Toward the right edge of the road. When a car with high beams approaches, you should look towards the right side of the road to avoid the glare and safely drive on your side. It helps you see the road and other cars better. Question 27. What should you keep in mind when driving on a wet road? A. That pavement is especially slippery right after it starts to rain. B. It's time to play loud music. C. The road is extra bumpy. D. You should drive as fast as you can. The correct answer is A. That pavement is especially slippery right after it starts to rain. When the road is wet, it can be very slippery, especially when it starts raining. So, it's important to be extra careful and drive more slowly to stay safe. Question 28. How are fines for breaking traffic rules in school zones different? A. Reduced. B. Tripled. C. Doubled. D. Stay the same. The correct answer is C. Doubled. Fines for moving traffic violations in school zones are doubled, which means they become twice as much as regular fines. This is to encourage drivers to be extra cautious and keep kids safe in these areas. Question 29. What does this sign tell you is coming up ahead? A. A railroad crossing. B. A rest area is up ahead. C. Right turns only. D. A roundabout is ahead. The correct answer is A. A railroad crossing. This sign is a warning that you are approaching a place where a railroad track crosses the road. It's important to be cautious when you see this sign to avoid any trains that might be coming. Question 30. What is the typical rule regarding the right-of-way for funeral processions when identified by headlights or hazard lights? A. Funeral processions are often granted the right-of-way. B. Funeral processions always have the right-of-way. C. Funeral processions never have the right-of-way. D. Funeral processions have the right-of-way only at traffic signals. The correct answer is A. Funeral processions are often granted the right-of-way. The typical rule regarding the right-of-way for funeral processions, when identified by headlights or hazard lights, is that they are often granted the right-of-way. This means that other vehicles on the road should yield to the funeral procession to show respect for the deceased and ensure the procession can proceed without interruption. However, these rules can vary by location and are usually a matter of local traffic laws and customs. Drivers should be aware of and follow the specific guidelines in their area. Question 31. While operating a vehicle, which individuals might you come across who are using a white cane or a guide dog? A. Pedestrians with disabilities. B. People with visual impairments. C. Joggers and runners. D. Cyclists on the road. The correct answer is B. People with visual impairments. While operating a vehicle, you may encounter individuals using a white cane or a guide dog. These individuals often have visual impairments that may range from partial blindness to complete blindness. The white cane is a tool that helps them detect physical obstacles or changes in the terrain as they move. Guide dogs are specially trained service animals that assist people with visual impairments in navigating their surroundings safely. It's important for drivers to be aware of the presence of such individuals and to exercise caution and consideration when sharing the road to ensure their safety and well-being. Question 32. What should you do when you see a person with a white cane or a guide dog on the road? A. Speed up and pass quickly. B. Honk your horn loudly. C. Drive very close to them. D. Slow down and be prepared to stop. The correct answer is D. 
slow down and be prepared to stop. When you see a person with a white cane or a guide dog, you should slow down and get ready to stop to ensure their safety. This helps you avoid accidents and keeps everyone on the road safe. Question 33. If someone gets in trouble for driving after drinking alcohol for the first time, what could happen to them? A. Get a ticket. B. Go to the park. C. Eat ice cream. D. A fine community service, jail time, DUI school, license revocation, and an ignition interlock device. The correct answer is D. A fine community service, jail time, DUI school, license revocation, and an ignition interlock device. If you're caught driving after drinking alcohol for the first time, you might have to do different things like pay a fine, do community service, or even go to a special school to learn more about driving safely. You won't be able to drive for a while, and you might need a special device in your car to keep you from starting it if you've been drinking. Question 34. What does this road sign tell you about what might be ahead on the road? A. A school zone is ahead. B. Bicycle crossing. C. Only bicycles allowed. D. A steep hill is approaching. The correct answer is B. Bicycle crossing. This road sign means that you should be careful because you might come across people riding bicycles on the road. It helps keep everyone safe and aware of others using the road. Question 35. What steps can you take to ensure your well-being and safety for driving? A. Regularly schedule and attend vision checks. B. Avoid distractions like texting or using your phone while driving. C. Get sufficient rest and avoid driving when fatigued. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Ensuring one's well-being and safety while driving involves several key steps, including scheduling regular vision checks to maintain optimal eyesight, refraining from distractions like texting or using a phone while operating a vehicle, and prioritizing adequate rest to prevent driving while fatigued. By adhering to these measures, drivers can significantly reduce the risk of accidents and promote safer driving practices. Question 36. When the traffic light changes from green to solid yellow as you approach an intersection, you should A. Speed up and accelerate through the intersection. B. Maintain your speed and continue through the intersection. C. Slow down and prepare to stop, if it's safe to do so. D. Honk your horn to warn other drivers. The correct answer is C. Slow down and prepare to stop if it's safe to do so. When the traffic light turns from green to yellow, it's a sign to slow down and prepare to stop before the intersection, unless you're so close that stopping would be unsafe. This helps prevent accidents and keeps traffic moving safely. Question 37. What does this road sign tell you about the road you're on? A. Passing allowed only on the right side. B. Passing allowed on both sides. C. Lane reduction. The right lane ends soon. D. No passing allowed on either side. The correct answer is C. Lane reduction. The right lane ends soon. This road sign tells you that the right lane of the road is going to disappear soon, so you should merge into the left lane to keep traffic flowing smoothly and safely. Question 38. What should you do if you think another car might crash into you? A. Sound your horn to alert the other driver. B. Swerve off the road to avoid the other car. C. Pull to the right side of the road. D. Slam on your brakes to stop quickly. The correct answer is A. Sound your horn to alert the other driver. If you believe another car is about to hit you, it's a good idea to honk your horn to alert the other driver and try to prevent an accident. This can help avoid collisions and keep everyone safe on the road. Question 39. What does this sign tell you about the road ahead? A. You should increase your speed and proceed with caution. B. The highway ahead is undergoing maintenance. C. You are exiting a construction zone. D. There is a detour ahead. The correct answer is B. The highway ahead is undergoing maintenance. 
This sign warns you that the road ahead is being worked on or repaired, so you should be cautious and drive safely through the construction zone. It helps prevent accidents and keep drivers and workers safe. Question 40. Why is the drawbar or towing connection significant when you're pulling a trailer or load with your car? A. It enhances the vehicle's appearance. B. It helps with fuel efficiency. C. It ensures safe and secure towing. D. It provides extra storage space. The correct answer is C. It ensures safe and secure towing. When you're towing something behind your vehicle, the drawbar or towing connection must be strong enough to handle the weight you're pulling to keep everyone safe on the road. Question 41. What should drivers do when they come to a roundabout or rotary island? A. Speed up and go through quickly. B. Stop and have a picnic. C. Close your eyes and hope for the best. D. Yield to traffic already in the roundabout. The correct answer is D. Yield to traffic already in the roundabout. When drivers approach a roundabout or rotary island, they should slow down, yield to any cars that are already in the circle, and wait for a safe opportunity to enter the roundabout. This helps keep traffic flowing smoothly and avoids accidents. Question 42. What should a driver do when getting onto the interstate from an entrance ramp? A. Should honk their horn loudly. B. Should drive as fast as they can. C. Should yield to drivers already on the interstate. D. Should stop and have a snack. The correct answer is C. Should yield to drivers already on the interstate. When a driver is entering the interstate from an entrance or acceleration ramp, it's important to slow down and yield to the cars that are already on the interstate to merge safely into traffic. This keeps everyone on the road safe and traffic moving smoothly. Question 43. When should you leave more space in front of your car when you need to stop? A. When driving on a clear straight road. B. On an incline. C. When traveling at high speeds. D. During daylight hours. The correct answer is B. On an incline. When you're stopping your car on a hill or incline, it's a good idea to leave more space in front of your car. This extra space helps prevent your car from rolling backward and keeps you safe while you're driving on hills. Question 44. What is parallel parking? A. Parallel parking is when a vehicle is parked parallel to the curb and other parked vehicles. B. Parallel parking is when a vehicle is parked perpendicular to the curb. C. Parallel parking is when a vehicle is parked at a 45-degree angle to the curb. D. Parallel parking is when a vehicle is parked facing the opposite direction of traffic. The correct answer is A. Parallel parking is when a vehicle is parked parallel to the curb and other parked vehicles. Parallel parking is a specific method of parking a vehicle alongside a curb, typically between two parked cars. It involves positioning the vehicle parallel to the curb, with its wheels aligned and within a designated parking space. This maneuver requires careful coordination and skill to ensure the vehicle is properly aligned and doesn't obstruct traffic. Question 45. What might be risky and lead to a crash if you do it while driving? A. Take your eyes off the road. B. Adhering to the posted speed limit. C. Eating or drinking. D. Adjusting the radio or changing the climate control settings. The correct answer is A. Take your eyes off the road. Anything that distracts you from the road or makes you take your eyes off it can be dangerous and could cause a car crash. It's important to stay focused on driving to keep yourself and others safe. Question 46. What should you do if you see an emergency vehicle with flashing lights while you're driving? A. Wave to the emergency vehicle. B. Make every effort to give the emergency vehicle a clear path of travel. C. Start a race with it. D. Drive very slowly in front of it. The correct answer is B. Make every effort to give the emergency vehicle a clear path of travel. When you see an emergency vehicle with flashing lights, it's important to make space for it to pass safely. 
This helps the emergency responders get to where they're needed quickly and can save lives. Question 47. What does a solid yellow arrow on a traffic signal mean? A. You should prepare to stop if it is safe to do so. B. You should prepare to stop if it is safe to do so. C. Has the same meaning as a circular yellow traffic light. D. You must come to a complete stop immediately. The correct answer is C. Has the same meaning as a circular yellow traffic light. A solid yellow arrow on a traffic signal means the same thing as a circular yellow traffic light. It's a signal to slow down and prepare to stop if you can do so safely, just like when you see a regular yellow traffic light. Question 48. How can you safely inspect your surroundings before initiating the process of reversing your car? A. Use your side mirrors only. B. Honk the horn to alert others. C. Turn on the radio for better awareness. D. Check all mirrors, look over your shoulder, and use rearview mirrors. The correct answer is D. Check all mirrors, look over your shoulder, and use rearview mirrors. Before reversing your car, it's crucial to check all mirrors, look over your shoulder, and use rearview mirrors to ensure a comprehensive understanding of your surroundings and minimize blind spots. Question 49. What should you do when a car is driving very close behind you? A. Play a game of hide and seek. B. Slam on your brakes. C. Move over to the right if there is an open lane to your right. D. Speed up and drive faster. The correct answer is C. Move over to the right if there is an open lane to your right. If a car is driving very closely behind you, it's a good idea to safely move to the right if there's an open lane available. This can help both you and the other driver stay safe and avoid accidents. Question 50. How should you respond when you observe an individual holding a flag and guiding traffic within a construction zone? A. Follow the directions given by the flagger. B. Speed up to clear the construction zone quickly. C. Ignore the flagger's instructions and proceed as usual. D. Honk your horn to get the flagger's attention. The correct answer is A. Follow the directions given by the flagger. When you see a flagger in a construction zone, it's important to follow the directions they give you. They're there to help keep traffic flowing smoothly and everyone safe in the work area. Question 51. When is it advisable to signal your intention to overtake another vehicle? A. Immediately before passing the vehicle. B. As you are passing the vehicle. C. When you start changing lanes to pass. D. In advance, before changing lanes to pass. The correct answer is D. In advance, before changing lanes to pass. It's important to signal your intention to pass another vehicle early enough so that other drivers on the road are aware of your plans. This helps prevent surprises and keeps everyone safe. Question 52. How should you respond when you notice other drivers displaying road rage? A. Engage in aggressive behavior to assert dominance. B. Ignore their behavior and continue driving as usual. C. Avoid eye contact and maintain a safe distance. D. Honk your horn and gesture to express your frustration. The correct answer is C. Avoid eye contact and maintain a safe distance. When you see other drivers getting angry, it's best not to react with hand gestures or get angry back. Stay calm and focus on your driving to avoid road rage and keep everyone safe. Question 53. When is it okay for drivers to drive across or park on a median? A. Whenever they want. B. Only on weekends. C. When they want to have a picnic. D. They should never drive into a median. The correct answer is D. They should never drive into a median. Drivers should never drive across or park on a median. Medians are there to separate lanes of traffic and ensure safety on the road. Question 54. What can drivers do when they see a traffic signal showing a flashing yellow arrow? A. Stop and have a picnic. B. May turn left after yielding to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. C. Speed up and drive faster. 
D. Wave to the traffic signal. The correct answer is B. May turn left after yielding to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. When you come across a traffic signal displaying a flashing yellow arrow, you can turn left after making sure it's safe by yielding to oncoming cars and people walking across the road. This helps keep everyone on the road safe. Question 55. What's the safest way to pass a bicyclist when you see them on a road without bicycle lanes? A. Slow down and wait until there is no traffic approaching, then pass the bicyclist while leaving him or her sufficient space. B. Speed past the bicyclist as quickly as possible. C. Drive very close to the bicyclist. D. Honk your horn loudly to let the bicyclist know you're coming. The correct answer is A. Slow down and wait until there is no traffic approaching, then pass the bicyclist while leaving him or her sufficient space. To safely pass a bicyclist on a road without bicycle lanes, it's best to slow down, wait for oncoming traffic to clear, and then pass the bicyclist while leaving enough space to keep both you and the bicyclist safe. This helps prevent accidents and ensures everyone can share the road comfortably. Question 56. What is black ice and why is it so dangerous? A. It does not exist. There is no such thing as black ice. B. Something your friends at school use to change the color of their drinking water. C. You drive a four-wheel drive car so you do not need to be concerned about black ice. D. A thick coat of highly transparent ice, which means it blends into the road well and makes it harder to see. The correct answer is D. A thick coat of highly transparent ice, which means it blends into the road well and makes it harder to see. Black ice is very hard to see. This is what makes it so dangerous. When driving in colder temperatures and the pavement is wet, there is always a chance for black ice to occur. Black ice frequently occurs when the sun warms snow and ice during the day, temperatures drop once the sun goes down, and the snow and ice that turned into water will now freeze making it hard to see. An area of the roadway might look wet, when indeed it is ice. Be prepared when driving during these types of situations. Question 57. How should you respond if the accelerator pedal of your vehicle becomes jammed while you're driving on a crowded road? A. Quickly apply the brakes and stop the car. B. Shift into neutral and steer to a safe area. C. Honk your horn to alert other drivers. D. Increase your speed to unjam the pedal. The correct answer is B. Shift into neutral and steer to a safe area. If your car's gas pedal gets stuck, it's important to turn off the ignition to stop the car from going faster. Make sure not to engage the steering wheel locking mechanism as it could make your car harder to control. This helps you stay safe in a potentially dangerous situation. Question 58. What does this sign tell you about? A. School. B. A church. C. Intersection. D. A library. The correct answer is C. Intersection. This sign is used to let drivers know that they are approaching an intersection, which is where two or more roads come together. It's important to pay attention to such signs for safe driving. Question 59. What should you do when you're coming up to an intersection that doesn't have any stop signs or traffic lights? A. Close your eyes and hope for the best. B. Be prepared to yield. C. Drive as fast as you can. D. Honk your horn loudly. The correct answer is B. Be prepared to yield. When you're driving towards an intersection without stop signs or traffic lights, you should be ready to yield, which means you may need to let other cars go first. This keeps traffic moving safely. Question 60. What should you do when you see a flashing yellow light at an intersection? A. Stop and wait for a green light. B. Speed up and drive quickly. C. Make a U-turn. D. Drive carefully through the intersection. The correct answer is D. Drive carefully through the intersection. When you see a flashing yellow light, 
It means you should be cautious and continue through the intersection safely, making sure to watch for other cars or pedestrians. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the link right here to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your DMV exam on the first try.